All right, so Grixis Shadow. This is definitely what you could classify as a more experimental build. Um, there's three copy of Sphinx of Sphinx of Foresight in this list, and only 16 lands. So we had tried Sphinx of Foresight in uh, what was it a blue red phoenix deck and it was kind of mediocre there it ended up being worse than a land a lot of the time but this deck list is a little bit different so we're gonna go ahead go ahead and give it a try um i think there's a chance this is greedy but we'll see we'll see how it ends up playing out Going on, Stephen Douglas. I would love to play first. Thank you for asking. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I guess this is a keep. <laughs> Sounds good, confusion. Um, this is actually kind of awkward, right? Like, I've got. Oh, you know what? You know what's funny? I can. We could. We could double. We so we could double scry here, and then if there's a card that I want on top of my deck in between the scry triggers, I could cycle the street wraith, which is kind of funny. So like. I'm probably not in for Snapcaster. I think I'm in for both of these. Hey, Blind Wind, thanks for the two months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. I think, I, I think I'm in for Shadow plus Delta here. And then before this one happens, I'm going to go ahead and cycle this. No, you'll get... You get to four lands like... Like, pretty regularly in this archetype, I think. Alright, we're on the play. I probably don't want this Inquisition. I think I'm going to go bottom, bottom with these other two and just keep this Death Shadow on top for now. And, like, honestly, that whole, that whole thing was kind of mediocre, right? Like, the fact that this deck has so many fetch lands in it makes the Sphinx this really awkward. So like, do I, do I like just fetch shock right away or do I, do I fetch shock right away so I can thought scour or do I like draw the death shot that's on top of my deck? All right. So they're playing ad nauseum most likely. They suspended a Lotus Bloom over here. So I think I'm just supposed to fetch shock. So like now I have like these four mana four fours in my hand. It's just like, I, I guess they helped me find a second land, but like. Why did I thought scour them? I don't know. It worked out. We drew we drew thought sees. We thought scoured them because we're a powerful wizard. Grab a blood crypt here. All right. You have a pair of ad nauseums. I have a pair of thought sees. It seems only fair. Morning, Maddie. Heard your event sold out for the weekend. Congrats. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and thought scour ourselves to start here. Would it be beneficial to be on the draw? God, I can't imagine that's right. Being being on the play is so much tempo in this in this format. In magic in general, it's so much tempo. Attack you with my one mana five five.
All right. And then they cast Spoils of the Vault and died. Nice, uh, nice deck. Good, good, clean, live in. Stubborn Denial, Disdainful Stroke, a Braid is a Charm. Get to cut a bunch of these removal spells. Seems fine. We paid. Hey, hey, Tarmogoyf was a 4 5 most of the time. Thank you very much. Don't, don't undersell, don't undersell Tarmogoyf. Does that they died with spoils? Does that mean Marty owes bits? Asking the real questions. All right. I mean, I've got I've got Sphinx again here, and this hand, this hand's really good, right? It's got uh, I guess it kind of needs a threat, but Sphinx is hopefully gonna help us dig to one of those. And I've got a uh, cantrip with Bobble, and I've got a counter spell to the skirt spell. Morning, Mad. Morning, Swamp. So R9, R9 came out. I added a command for it. Is um, It's a spam prevention tool that Twitch is beta testing that I've enabled. Maltmeister, thanks for the 10 months. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Um, and what... I These are none of the threats I'm looking for, so let's just like bottoms up here. Uh, it is a spam prevention tool that prevents messages that are super similar from being posted in rapid succession. So, I appreciate the good morning. It was probably, it probably prevented it because other people had said good morning very recently. And Hand is very good against Thoughtseize, you're not wrong. All right, so they did that, that. It's fine. We just we just need to find another land, right? So we could we get we'd snap thoughts these them before they get a chance to get to their ad nauseum, basically. All right, one death shadow, please. One death shadow, please. I'm not gonna fetch shock because I bottomed a bunch of cards that I don't really want to draw. Obviously, we'll fetch shock next turn if we don't have a different land. But while we can avoid shuffling cards back in that I don't want to redraw, I'm going to. I assume is a charm's there because it's flexible. So like is a charm isn't just like obviously is a charm's worse than a counter spell, right? But is a charm is a charm is is better when you need to be a removal spell too sometimes. Keep clicking out of this. Yep, yep, gotta just send it through. It's okay, Lumbering Waterfalls. Send it, send it on through. It's what it wants you to do. I think I'm supposed to snap thoughts easier. I it might be right to just like Gurmag hold Stub up. Their thing is, their thing's not coming in for two turns though, so I should be okay. If this was coming in next turn, I might want to hold up Stub, but I think since I have two turns, this is fine. Save so Unlife and Double Angel's Grace. This matchup tends to be very very bad for the ad nauseum side of the table. Like these type of spell based combo decks or the types of decks that like Grixis Shadow tends to devour. Oh. Half inch of ice, gross. All right, so they pitched Simeon Spirit Guide to do that. Seems fine for me. All right, so... How long you play a deck in Modern? I think of my bad computer. How much... Oh, how much it is to get you to play a deck in Modern? Yeah, everything. everything's on my website. And, uh, TL, TLDR for modern is that for subs, it's a, it's a $25 minimum to get a modern deck in the queue. 
And keep in mind, I'm not taking all modern decks for the most part right now. I'm only taking decks that are like kind of linear or super fast. Any anything that's like kind of slow and grindy, I'm pretty much rejecting at this point because it's been it's been really frustrating playing those kinds of decks in modern in my experience lately. All right, so this is coming off. Um, I think they're so choked on mana that I'm just going to stub this. And next one, I plan to snap stub. Snap stub the next one. Hey, Protoss. Thanks for the two months. Welcome back. Anything for a timeout? Got you. Yeah, Storm's a fine deck. Storm is... Any of, like, the the de facto good decks in Modern are fine, fine submission. Good afternoon from Germany. Been watching YouTube for a while. Made my first 4-0 at f with Black Green Elves in Modern. Awesome. Yeah, Elves, Elves is another great, great selection of a deck that I'd be happy to play. Things that, things that, things that can kill by turn three some amount of the time and consistently kill by four are great choices, in my opinion, for Modern decks. Throng. Check it in for the 10th month in a row. All right, so they're dead in two here. <clears throat> I guess I guess they have double Angel's Grace over here, which makes it not dead in two. They're going to be... They're probably going to Angel's Grace my next couple of attacks. Yeah, we got, we got plenty of stubs in our bin. So I assume they're going to Angel's Grace here, so they stay at one. They have two Angels Grace in their hands that we know about. Actually, you know, they're... All right, they have a Pact of Negation. I was going to say, so I was, gonna, I was going to say to myself, I've already, I've already stopped two of their Addos or taken two of them away. Maybe I shouldn't be fighting over their mana, but if they... If they're going to have a Pact of Negation here, I'd much rather fight over their mana because that means... If they were to draw an ad nauseum later, I definitely wouldn't be able to stop it because they'd be able to just like pack my counter spell. So keeping them off of mana here seems valuable since I know this pack of negation is coming off the top. Oh, uh, yeah, I totally didn't update Stream Decker. Thanks for the reminder. All right, should be good to go. So just to like keep track of the cards that like we're theoretically trying to test in Grixis Shadow as far as the Sphinxes go. So game one, the Sphinxes were awkward because we had uh, so many fetch lands. But game two, it was like pretty reasonable, right? Like we bought them three on the draw and like found some relevant cards in their place. That like wasn't the worst. Like I found, found Gurmag Angler faster to lost close the game out. Hey, what's going on, Greg? Thanks for the half a year. Thanks for shipping your Bezo bucks back this way again. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a good Thursday wherever you're at. Will I be using it for deck lists or other stream related info? No, I'm just not not logging into Twitter for the foreseeable future. So, if you want if you want updates, you'll have to follow the stream. I'm still tagging people in the sub Discord when I go live, but that that last tweet with my schedule that I tweeted in pinned is gonna be my last tweet for a while. Welcome, welcome back to a live one.
Twitter. Twitter the last couple days was making me feel just like kind of kind of miserable as a person. Kind of how how I was feeling like when I was interacting with Reddit a whole bunch. And I took a I took a break from Reddit and haven't logged in there to post anything in like a couple of months now. And my life's been much happier for it. So remove needless negativity from your life. If after if after a week it seems like not posting deck list to Twitter throughout the stream negatively impacts my numbers, I'm gonna change that and just post deck list. But I'd, I'd honestly be kind of surprised if it impacts my numbers that much because like the number of Twitter followers I have versus current Twitch followers is like much smaller. I mean, honestly, like the entire, the entire, in the internet's just like full of echo chambers, basically, right? And like, even, even to a degree, like we're, we're an echo chamber here, right? Like a lot of, a lot of what I've heard over the last couple of days has been basically everything, everything I do is wrong or like nothing I do is wrong. And like, I love the people that think I don't do anything wrong, but, like, the re the reality of the situation is that, like, it's definitely somewhere in the middle, right? Like, I definitely suck sometimes, and, like, I'm pretty reasonable, I think, a lot of the time, but just, like, at the end of, at the end of the day, trying to, like, interact with people who tell you that everything is wrong, like, I'm not, I'm not gonna make any headway, it's just, like, punching my hand into a wall, which is just, like, not a productive use of my time. Um... I think these set us up for turn two. God, can I go turn two both of these? I'm going to have, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to, yeah, these, these actually let me play Death Shadow and Gromag Angler on two. Hey, what's going on, Gokai? Thanks for the seven months. I appreciate it. All right, so am I supposed to just kill this? I'm gonna put like two poopers into play. If I put two poopers into play, do I need to kill this? Thanks, Fitzbull. No, I don't intend to stop being transparent. There's a lot of, the thing I learned, the thing I learned yesterday and the feedback I've gotten from a lot of people in the industry is that apparently a lot of people think that transparency is bad. And like, I don't, I don't, I definitely don't think that's the case or don't believe that that should be the case. I don't plan to change that. Do I need to kill this? It's probably gonna gain them like 15, right? So I should probably kill it with fire. Burn it to the ground. Rhythm, rhythm is very good against control. I mean, it's just kind of like, it's just kind of like the society we live in though, right? Like, you know, even not in a public facing thing like this, you know, like it's considered taboo to like talk about how much money you make at work. And that's, and that's the type of thing that's considered to be made taboo because companies don't want their employees talking to each other to like know how much they make. So that way the people they're underpaying can't ask for a raise, right? And like you hear people come in and mention that all the time when they talk on my stream here, like, you know, I'm really upfront about how, how this is my job. And like, I'm here because I love what I do, but like the only reason I'm able to be here 40 hours a week is because it does pay my bills, right? Like if it didn't pay my bills, I'd have to be doing something else for a chunk of that time. And I think that, I think that's definitely not the norm. Uh, this is a format called Modern. It is a non-rotating format um, that encompasses cards from the last, uh, gosh, how many years is it now? Is it like 15 or 16 years?
There are 12,000 cards in Modern. Modern. Modern is very daunting as a new player. So Modern and formats like Modern tend to be formats that are there to keep players who are existing established players interested in the game as opposed to being accessible to new players. All right, I think I just take let them take this hit here. Then I'm going to go ahead and cast my Sphinx of Foresight. And then hope not to get Wrath of God in next turn. We just like, we're not beating a Wrath this game, so Wrath me. The difference between Modern and Legacy. So Modern starts from the set 8th edition, which is about um, 10 years into Magic's time cycle. Whereas Legacy goes all the way back to the start of Magic with a ban list. And like, both, both formats have ban lists because there's lots of wacky, powerful cards in these formats that <laughs> otherwise would be too good. But the card pool in Legacy is even bigger than the card pool in Modern. Yikes, this thing's about they didn't they didn't play a land, so they're probably about to gain 21. Inquisition actually sounds great here. Sign me up. Woof. So they have they have Wrath of God, and they are missing that they're missing a land. And they're about to gain 18. So I basically just have to hope they don't draw they don't draw a land. If they don't draw a land for a turn, we could we could kill them. So they're gonna gain 18 up to 33. This teamer battle rage is plus 14 points of damage. So it's 14, 19, 23. I think I just do this. Well, there's no threat of like path to exile or anything like that. Yeah, any any land will do it because they have ghost quarters. Like if they draw like another colorless land, they'll float mana and ghost quarter themselves. All right, brick please. Anything I'm just going to concede? I'm just going to concede. Just move along with our lives. This is definitely a Liliana of the Last Hope and Anger of the Gods matchup. Fatal push as well. It's a little, it's a little awkward that... Like, I kind of want some of these Stubborn Denials, but at the same time, like, they're kind of creature-based. So, like, exactly what direction do I want to go in? Like, I want some of my counter magic, but at the same time, I, like, want a bunch of my removal spells. This application actually predates 8th edition. Maybe it is right about then. The beginning, this actually, it probably comes to about around the start of modern. 8th edition, this application is uh, 18 years old, 17 years old. Where my where my trims here? This is this might be too slow. Is it greedy to cut cantrips? Probably. Let's do it anyways. Snapcaster mage is a little expensive. And bringing in I'm bringing in last hope and anger, so maybe trimming some of my other more expensive threats is fine. Need to cut one more thing here. I'm just gonna leave two stubs in instead of three. MTGO is older than half of Twitch's viewers. A sub point command that's a question that comes up a lot since i've had that up on screen basically the the tldr is that higher higher tier subs give more more sub points since they cost more dollars 
No, I, I asked a mod to add it, but I don't think they did. Did a mod make one? I asked a mod to make one. I don't. I didn't actually see it though. I think I mulligan this. It just like doesn't have a threat and might not find a blue land. All right. Yep. So this will be a hand where we get to, uh, I'm looking for a land, right? So let's bottom that. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to Mishra's Bubble myself. And then there's a Mishra's Bubble on top of my deck, which is not a card that I want to draw. So I'm going to Fetch Shock here before I draw my card next turn to give myself a chance to draw a different card here. Oh my gosh, I was looking at the wrong thing. Well, there was a Snapcaster Mage on top of my deck, which is also not something I wanted to draw. Whoopsie. Mistakes were made. Popped out the wrong thing. Thanks. Thanks, Bodo. Well, all worked out, I suppose. I think this matchup's pretty bad for our deck on average. If I had to venture a guess. They have a, a lot of life gain, a lot of random things that block our stuff, and uh, Wrath of God. Yeah, I'm just going to move along. This, th this bubble build of Shadow is something that's felt greedy when we played it in the past, as far as, like, making your land drops and playing consistent game of magic goes, and, like, cutting more lands and adding Sphinx of Foresight just, like, leans into that greed pretty hard. I don't think it lets you upgrade your Prime Sub. I'm actually not sure on those details. I should find out. That's something people ask. I should email my Twitch rep and find, get a hard answer to that, how that works. I don't believe so. On the desktop, you might be able to pay the full amount, but you can't, like, you can't, like, split the difference, unfortunately. I know that. You can't, like, prime sub and then do $5 to get to tier two, which is, which is awkward. I think reading the difficulty of modern decks is something that's like the difficulty of magic decks in general is like not not something that's like really constructed to do and is kind of just like self filating just like the only the only reason to like try and rate decks is to like make yourself feel good about the thing that you play it feels like or to put other people down like say oh i'm an intellectual the modern deck that i play is very difficult and your deck is easy to play you 100 percent cannot upgrade all right thanks for the info it's all it's all or nothing i thought i thought you could i thought you could upgrade but it was all or nothing all right, well, I'm going to take their one card that matters. Never, this is a good a good piece of just general advice when playing against the Scapeshift deck. Never take their ramp spell. Their deck is almost all lands. They're going to draw more ramp spells than lands. Just take their payoffs. They have way, way less payoffs than they do mana. It's amazingly meta. Well, I mean, it looked like you were heading in that direction, so we just, like, had to appease you. See, I don't, I don't even actually think that's true, Strictly Weens. I actually think good control decks are incredibly easy to play on average. I think, I think good control decks that, like, have all their stuff going on for them are actually some of the easiest things to play in Magic. And I get that a lot of times, like, control, like, makes you feel smart a lot of the time. But, like, control, control decks were like, oh, I did my thing and I killed their thing and then I did the other thing and I killed their thing. Like, there's not, there's not a lot of difficulty in navigating those games, in my opinion. It's just like, oh, everything, everything went the way I wanted it to go. And like, I killed their stuff and then eventually like my Jeffrey won the game. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of the time, and this is, this is honestly a lot of it. If a deck isn't like KCI where it uses convoluted rules interactions, a lot of the time when people say a deck is hard to play, what they actually mean is the deck is bad and it's hard to play because if you're not playing well with the bad deck, you're going to lose.
and, and honestly, at the end at the end of the day, there's there's complex and small things that you do to gain edges with basically every they did they seriously draw two lightning bolts? Am I about to get double bolted out of this game while I have them dead next turn? Oh, this archetype. Oh. <sighs> I mean, bluffing Stubborn Denial doesn't do anything because I'm going to attack for lethal next turn and they're going to make me have it and they're, I'm going to die. I'm going to die when I don't have it. It's, yep. I, this deck is very good. I find it incredibly frustrating to play and I'm sure there will be some, some expert that'll tell me I should have played around that there instead of putting lethal into play the following turn. I should have played around them drawing double lightning bolt, but... I'm pretty confident that I'm not, because they were dead next turn with the Teamer Battle Rage. Yeah, that's something that's something that came up a lot with the the new the card game artifact that flopped, right? Like people well, a lot of people were describing artifact as being this super complicated thing. When in reality, Artifact wasn't really complicated. It was just kind of busy. And people think that just because there's a lot going on means that something has to be hard. And it's like, well, you know, if I told you to do 12 multiplication problems simultaneously, that's like, that's like it's busy. There's a lot going on, but it's not actually really complicated what you're doing, right? It's like you're doing a bunch of simple things, but you're just doing a lot of them at the same time. Uh, well, I mean, this is the best of all the hands I've looked at. I don't... I don't think so, Brian. So... My takeaway from the last time we tried playing the Sphinx was, and, and like that first hand's a good example, right? Like imagine if that Sphinx is just a land in the first hand, like is it keepable then? Like when we played three Sphinxes in the uh, Phoenix deck, the Phoenix TT deck, we we actually just like came to the conclusion at the end of it, like why weren't we just playing two more lands? It was just like much worse than playing two more lands. Yeah, they're gonna Ma Magic Arena is gonna have a non-rotating format of its own. That's a new a new format. It'll be it'll be coming out sometime in the fall. You know what? Honestly, I wonder if I'm supposed to have stubborn denialed this far seek just because. Yeah, I'm just we're we're not beating that. Just because um, wonder if I'm supposed to have stubborn denialed the far seek because it would have put a card in the bin for Gurmag Angler on the line. If I would have stubbed this, I could have played Gurmag on three. Maybe I maybe I'm supposed to have done that. Yeah, this build this build of Grixis Shadow does not does not seem great. The old the old Sphinx of Foresight. Good, good in Narset Cannon. Not, not so good most other places. Are there results posted from Arena? There is not. We get actual zero data out of Arena, which doesn't surprise me. We we did play Narset Cannon with Sphinx of Foresight. The last the last Narset Cannon League had four Sphinxes in it, and it was great. You're, you're not wrong, Johnny Boy. Crashing it pretty quickly in modern these days is not necessarily a bad thing. So it loads right. Makes means we reload up Arena quickly. All right. I mean, I think I'm supposed to keep Sphinx of Foresight plus Street Wraith. I get I get four. I'm on the play, but I get four shots to the land. So like, 
I mean, it would be super easy to gather data from it. So people that are newer to magic, um, Wizard of the Coast has a, and this, and this is, this is the type of stuff why, why Wizards of the Coast doesn't want to work with me and why they consider me a liability just for reference. Wizards of the Coast has a history of being anti-data with their games. So they could access lots of good, lots of good data from Magic Online even, and they take the data that they have from Magic Online and they make it artificially diverse to make the formats look more diverse than they actually are. And that's an active decision that they make because they think giving less data makes their game better because it means when there's an issue with the design team, which we haven't had recently, like this current format is awesome because the design team's done a good job, but they think when there's an issue with the design team and they've messed up, having less data makes it less apparent that they've messed up. It's definitely not impossible for Modern to come to Arena. The question is, like, is the effort of programming Modern into Arena proportional to the amount of money that they're going to make from investing that effort? Can you describe how they're doing that? Yeah, so they, they were actually upfront with how they make the data artificially diverse. So, basically, they post all of the 5.0 deck lists from their competitive leagues on Magic Online, but they don't repost decks that are within, I think it's 20 cards or 15 cards or some number of cards of another card that's posted. So basically if 40 copies of the same deck post a 5-0 in the same time frame, they only post one copy of it. So that's why like when you go to a website like MTG Goldfish and you see all those percentages of deck lists up there, those percentages are lying to you. They're, they're inaccurate and Goldfish, I actually, I really wish Goldfish would put a disclaimer up there because I think it's, I think it's intellectually dishonest to post the percentages like they do without an asterisk explaining how they get there and why they're wrong. Like, it's fun to put a number there, but like presenting the information in the way that they do without, without explaining how it's skewed, I think is very wrong. I think it does a disservice to the community, especially newer players that don't understand what's being done to make that data happen. Obviously, I don't interact with people at Wizards of the Coast, so I can't say for certain. I can just speculate as to why they've made their, made their decisions. But I will say that they tightened up their data as their standard formats became worse over the last couple of years. And like right now, it would be awesome to see all the data because the standard format's awesome. And I would like to see lots of neat things. I'm sure there's lots of neat things hiding in lots of places. Rhodes, I used to over today means I have my morning coffee with Jeff. What's going on, Madman? Thanks for the two months. Welcome back. So this is incredibly awkward. I'm missing on lands here again because this deck's a giant pile of greed. Just like imagine if this was a fetch or a shock, like we'd be much better off. Maybe Black Dragon, maybe. I think we're probably dead here. Maybe maybe they're just drawing blanks. They do just keep playing lands out, but they're also like not cycling this. Yeah, kinda our our one. So like one of the things that makes Magic Online clunky is the fact that it has to support all of these things that like weren't intended to be played digitally. So there's an article on the mothership at one point that talks about there was a time, I think it was around um, Shadows of Rain or Shroud or maybe a little bit before um, where 
they were they were talking about how there was a point in time where the digital team started working with the team that actually designs magic cards to make that experience better. All right, so in response to this, I'm going to fatal push this. Then I get to soft stub this. So maybe maybe we're not screwed here. I still have this dismember. If they if they bogles us next turn and just like put a second hexproof lord into play, we're definitely dead, but if they don't do that, we might have a shot. Build arounds are 25 and Bruce Submission is 10. Are tier three subs allowed to submit one or the other once a month? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, tier three subs can add either a build around or, or a submission of their own. If they put in a submission of their own, it goes in with 30 points for their tier three sub. If they put in a, a build around, it goes in with 30 as well. Someone asked, so where does the MTG metagame percentages come from? It comes from, well, no data comes out of Arena. So, like, the percentages you see on the standard page on Goldfish come from Magic uh, tournament finishes, and they come from uh, they come from uh, Magic event tournament finishes and the, the artificially diverse data that comes out of Magic Online. Hey, what's going on, Worst Neighbor? Lands are overrated. We're dead. Hey, Aldorte found the found the link. Talking about uh, digital and physical working together. Digital and the design team working together. It was my sword get upgraded to? What's going on, Magic Applegate? Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I don't think this is an Anger of the Gods matchup. This card's a little bit awkward against their uh, Mausoleum Wanderer being able to counter it. And, like, their creatures can get out of range if they get two of the two Mana Lords. And they sometimes have Selfless Spirit as well. So I think I'd rather just, like, be on spot removal on the layout of the last Toke plan rather than this. Uh, this is match four, but it might it might be the last one if we just get dumpster to get here. Oh. All right, all right. So you're saying there's a chance. Do -do 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 My body is ready to get past exiled. Sphinx has been really bad. Much like when we played the Phoenix build, it's just been like worse than playing another land. Uh, it was good in our set cannon. And it was good in the standard deck that we played. Wow, I'm glad we played a turn two Gurbag Angler. Yowza. No worries, Houghtons. Get it, get it out of there. That's, uh, that's some Drog Skull Captains. All right, well, if I had, if I had a land here, we'd, if I had a way to get these things into play, we'd probably be in a good spot. Maybe Bolts plus Teamer Battle Rage mean we can win this still. We didn't, we didn't get path, so, like, don't tell me you drew a path. Oh, whew. Scry three, exile a card for me. And yeah, I mean, a lot of the time, right? Like... I'm just going to go ahead and Fatal push this now. Just get it out of the way in case they draw a land so they can't company or spell call our main. And then next turn we can hopefully team or battle rage and kill them. 
Uh, they're still playing one copy of Liliana the Last Hope. Yeah, so we played Sphinx in a blue splash white deck, and it was really good there. Or felt, felt really good, at least. I wonder if they're not playing Reflector Mage. The fact that they're not just collecting company proactively here makes me think maybe they're not playing Reflector Mage. Despite all his rage, he is still just a rat in a cage. As someone will say, what is lost can never be saved. Do, 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 do. So this is uh, hitting for 10, minus 4. So this is hitting them for 6. So this bolt's lethal, right? Bolt them for 1. Yeah, the bolt's lethal. I, I almost, I almost like, I want to bolt this to do more damage, but the bolt's actually lethal with the double strike. Do, 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 the fact that they boarded a rest in peace makes sense, and it means I want my engineered explosives. <laughs> the Teamer Phoenix deck is absurd. Gen genuinely think that what's his name broke it uh, over turf or whoever whoever he built that deck for him. I don't know if he built it or someone gave it to him, but the list is it's the it is the that is the most powerful deck I have played in modern in a very very long time. The Teamer, Teamer Phoenix deck. I don't, I don't think I really want to cut my threats. I think I'd rather, I think I'd rather just like go fast on my Grimag. They're not always going to have, I, I, the way, the way they didn't collect a company makes me feel like they probably don't have Reflector Mage. And they, they likely only have like two or three copies of Rip at most, which means they're not going to have it all the time. And some of the time when they have it, I'm going to get to thought seize it out of their hands. So like. I think it's fine to keep fishing. Like the ga the games this deck gets to play magic, it's doing something that's really powerful. And I feel like skimping on lands for the Sphinx just like gives you more games where you just like don't actually get to play magic. I'm gonna take a look at the top card of their deck here so I get to thought seeds with a little bit of extra information. So I have a drag skull coming off the top. Wow, they do have Reflector Mage in their deck. That's really interesting. I, de I definitely would have put them on no Reflector Mage after them not collecting company proactively. So their, their Reflector Mage kind of sucks in the face of my, my Grimag Angler, but I don't think I can win if they get double Drug Skull Captain going, so I think I need to take that away. Hey, Pylon, thank you very much for the brand new Twitch Prime support. Now, there's a lot of great people making stuff on Twitch that you can give that to every month. Thanks for sending it here. Appreciate the Bezo Bucks. Sure. Black Source. Black Source. Black Source. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, ding, ding. What you got? I think, I think I just fatal push this. So I don't, maybe, maybe I'm supposed to hold the fetch and fetch fatal push the drug stall captain next turn. Hey, Tumble Dwyer, thanks for the $12 tip. I appreciate it. From Teamer Flash, thanks for the support. Uh, Tumble Dwyer, could you do me a favor and direct message me or email me the link to the deck list saying this is the one you donated for? It looks like there wasn't a link in your donation message. Just helps me. Helps me keep track of things a little bit. Thank you. Wow, they chose... Uh, they chose not to play... Their thing out, so I guess I I guess I will snap Inquisition them. I 
Even a spell queller? Nope, just trying to be cutesy. Yeah, yeah, we, we just live in a society where anything that's not, like, glowingly positive is considered mean. Just, it's what it is. Alright, well, they're on nothing, and we've got something. Is there a meme currently taking place in chat that I'm not hip to? I feel like I feel like I've missed a meme, chat. I feel like I feel like I've missed a meme. Path to exile. Rude. Hey, we have a bird. Have you heard about my bird? I said a buh -bu bird. Bu bird's the word. I said a bird. <coughs> lethal birdies. Yeah, lethal birdies. Nah, I don't. I, I think that that's probably pretty far from the case. Devil's Advocate. Uh, use the use the form my web my website for build around submissions as well. <laughs> uh, so not every deck gets an individual page on my website, Slumpty Dumpty. But if you go to, on my website, you click video standard, actual every deck I play on stream ends up on that page there. There's also a playlist on my YouTube channel. And if you, if you click, if you click on, um, if you click on the videos from my page to go to YouTube, the deck list is in the video description. I mean, Sphinx was good, like, to, to give Sphinx its, its, its due, its due diligence there. Having an extra threat was useful there, right? The Ace of Spades with the three month three sub. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. We got you, Miss Bits. Yeah, there's a reason why I cut Rift Bolt from the build of burn that we put the the cards in. Ah, see that's where you're wrong, Eldorte. I'm not the king of Hoaglandia. I am merely the jester that entertains the court. Nubinated, thank you very much for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for keeping me around. Sinks of Foresight, once again looking incredibly awkward with our pile of fetch lands. Mueller, checking in for the 16 month in a row. Welcome back. I guess I should stop saying in a row because they're not necessarily uh, cumulative anymore. Hey, Mike. Thanks for the three months. None of these cards are things that I want. I, I'd encourage you to read through some of the threads, stupid dog. Hmm. 
You'll probably get bored to death. <clears throat> a command for that explains these types right up. Maybe. Mm, this matchup's hard for us. Dredge. Dredge is a tough duck to crack. This, this build doesn't have any surgicals on the board either, right? It's just like two angers. Yikes. Yeah, I really wish we had a sub-gift leaderboard. Would be would be ideal. So the problem with this is there's actually I talked to I talked to my Twitch rep about that one. The problem with that is Weems, their Twitch apparently can't generate a report. And maybe I generate generate enough revenue that I could have someone go into the back end and check this for me. But my my Twitch rep told me that they don't have a way to generate a report to tell me how many subs people have gifted historically. Which means that everybody has gifted that's gifted subs already. I wouldn't be able to have accurate data on for that. Yeah, yeah, it's like super, super awkward. I'm just not gonna play this deck in stretch. I'm like I'm like sitting here thinking about lines and I'm just like, well, if they draw like creeping chill or they kill us with conflagrate and 32 months since you got me more interested in magic. Thank you, Tom, for the 32 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I'm just gonna move along with my life. We could have done plus seven. I don't know, maybe they were dead. I don't I don't know. I don't, I don't care enough. Historical data. Thank you, SCTR. Um, this card wasn't very good overall. I feel like I feel like I got what I needed out of that league. That's the awkward part about Magic Online leagues, right? Like we're locked into playing this deck. Like I feel like after three matches, if we were playing this on Magic Arena where I could be flexible and make changes, I would have cut this card. This card, it was like one time where it came up where like having an extra threat was nice, but most of the games we just mulliganed really aggressively and awkwardly, not having enough lands. And just like when we played it in the blue-red Phoenix deck, this card just felt mediocre because it wasn't a land most of the time. And like this build, just like the Phoenix, but I don't know who decided cutting two lands for three Sphinxes was the thing you wanted to do, but this deck basically cut two lands from like the normal shadow build and played three Sphinxes and it was just super kind of clunky and awkward. Um, not only did it not make up for not being a land a lot of the time, but it also, the fact that we have, you know, nine fetch lands in our deck, there were a number of times where it was like, well, we're going to scry here, but we're on the play and I only have a fetch land and I need to play a cantrip on one. And it's just like, well, this is super awkward. Yeah, I agree. In in modern, it's been less than impressive. All right, what are we doing? Let's play some video games. Click on click on my username there. It's it's not a great top deck either. I agree. Stand up, stretch it out. Uh, the deck we played it in, we've only played it in standard once, and it seemed fine in standard. Seemed reasonable there. The power, the power level of something like standard is much lower, right? Peoria Dolphin, thank you for the third month in a row. Welcome back. There's no, there's no second chance to be had. Wizards, Wizards of the Coast said they were, they, they found me a liability because of the feedback that I post on social media and the way, I, the way I give feedback on things. And I said, 
Well, I'm not interested in not giving negative feedback because the people watch me because I'm honest about my opinions and that, that I said, this isn't going to work if that's what we need to do. So thanks for your time and I'll, I'll catch you online. Yeah, we actually have played Pirates pretty recently. If you pull up the Pirates list on my website, it uh, we played it in the current format. I actually didn't change any cards in it. It just felt like very reasonable as is. Uh, five, five sub gifts, save a night. I don't have to take pictures anymore because I'm not posting them on Twitter. That's so great. Can break, can break. It's habit, right? I just like automatically take a screenshot when we're ready to change. Don't, don't need to. Don't need to. What's going on, mostly harmless? Yeah, I'm taking I'm taking a social media hiatus from non non work necessary social media. Yesterday, yesterday and the day before turned into a real crap show to just like the negativity was making me hate myself and my job. And like I generally really like my job, so like remove needless negativity from your life. So here I here I am.